I just want my dad to love me, but I know that there's something that he loves more. And I think it's the gold top glass bottle lying prostrate dying on the floor. Daddy said he loved my mom, but I don't truly think he does anymore. He stays out all night, sometimes days, talking about how he was just going to the store. I wonder if he's with that gold top glass bottle I saw lying on the floor. Daddy couldn't give me no money, but he's always with that fifteen dollar whore. You know, that gold top glass bottle I was speaking about before. <laughs> Mama's tired of these affairs, tells him he's gonna find his shit on the outside of the door if he keeps coming home smelling like that gold top glass bottle she found sneaking up her floor. I wonder, would it do any good if I was told her he keeps an extra in his drawer? Nah. Daddy already lost his dog, his car, and his business is about to fail. I don't even think he cares if he goes to the seventh hell, as long as Satan continues to sell that gold top glass bottle similar to the one that my pops likes to pour. Maybe I ought to go talk to him, let him know I appreciate his presence with all the thoughtful words a poor can employ speaking from his core, but I wouldn't want to interrupt that conversation he's having with the gold top glass bottle prior to the floor. It's really starting to irk my nerves, this gold top glass bottle light. What keeps them coming, guzzling back to that? Especially when the cops have to get involved when the temper gets all out of whack. Just maybe, just maybe, he tired of the hustle. That hard cost city struggle. The trouble with his boys and the government conspiracies. The young boys getting high, chasing rap star lives. And the little young girls rolling their mask, having cover eyes, showing their toothpick thighs. Injustice in the system, and difference with the Christians. One day, dad told me, son. Life is a car, and no matter how many times you wash it, some pigeons ever live to shit in it. <laughs> These are the things I remember last before I spent a gold top glass. It's not red, red wine, but every drip helps me to forget, so I prefer the frat chuck over holy communion sip. Just to get to the end of the bottle, once you're done with the bottle, you might weeble or wobble or get into a squabble, but the same reason you kiss and slip today will be waiting for you bright and early tomorrow. So I wouldn't want to intoxicate you guys with all my sorrow, so... Which one of you kind of things has had $15 for me to borrow? <laughs> You got two and a half minutes. Yeah. Oh, Give it a half. Yeah, let's go. Come All right. On. All right. All right. It's not that bad. Okay. Um, it goes like this. I may never know what it feels like to have a daughter, but nevertheless, God in His magnanimity has provided me a pen, blown life into a body of words, and blessed me with a precious poem, baby girl. And I love her. She is minuscule pixels of me thoughtfully reflected, the embodiment of self-expression, therefore I call her poetry. For she was made in my image, Afrocentric in her penmanship, baby. The ink that flows through you is only blue because it's my eye tear drips. That's why you're so fool. How dare I abandon her? Like my poet abandoned me. Left. Untitled and half written, I am my mother's side of the story, spoken from the pinnacle of her heart because the bottom is a graveyard of decomposing emotions. I am purposely written down in hopes that someone will look up, understanding that life is not about how many points people give you, but how many people lives you can give points to, untitled news. Understanding that the journey from brain cell to pin gel is one that many poem babies unfortunately fail. Understanding that I am one of the fortunate few because too many of these poem babies are aborted in the clinic of our minds or forced to go powerless and none of them should go loose leave but ask for my seed. Often what I remind her, she is beautiful in every sense of the word. Teach her she is pro verbs 31, the beginning with verse 10 and the flesh less. She goes to poetry slams and the judges don't score her a 10. She may cry for not being picked to win but she would never call herself worthless, formulated with purpose and sadly thinks she's perfect. And she is. Every night, I will remind her that she is special. So what if the poem babies at her workshop have one of the most expensive metaphors or their similes are well liked? You are unique, full with substance. Speak with conviction, love yourself, and those that matter will love you back, said the best dad ever. See mid stars and plastic moons, but you are very much human. The sensitive side of me, helping me to realize that poems are just people. And life is a notebook. Yeah, a tatted notebook, but no matter how wrinkled the pages, we are all worth reading. Even if no one wants to recite you, love you, because life is very much a tatted notebook. So don't tear yourself out of it. Don't 
tear yourself out of it. And we all may not be poetry written in beautiful cursive, but don't ever covet to change your fonts. Because even in your times in Romans, there's meaning. Because God does the scribble scrabble. Oh. Okay, great season, man.